Thank you for watching us on YouTube. But did you know that if you're on the go, you can get the full show as a podcast now? You can get our morning breakdown of the most important topics facing our country, news not being covered by the mainstream media, interviews with change-making progressives, and info on what you can actually do about all this. Search for The Damage Report on your favorite podcast app and subscribe so you know when new episodes are ready to go. So earlier this week on The Damage Report, we were breaking down some of the initial information coming out of the IPCC's, IPCC's gigantic climate change report. But I am admittedly not an expert, not a scientist by training, just a political scientist, which is scarcely one at all. <laughs> so we decided to bring on an actual scientist. And we're joined now on The Damage Report by volcanologist Jess Phoenix. Jess, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, John. Good to be here. Uh, it's very, uh, we're very glad to have you here. Uh, so uh, you've obviously had time now to uh, digest uh, some of the findings from this report. Uh, for those who, are, who don't have a background in science, uh, what are your main takeaways from it? Well, you know, actually, as dire as the report is, um, they actually were pretty conservative in uh, in what they were saying uh, has already happened and what will happen. Uh, they they went conservative, I think, because of how resistant uh, certain folks in our current government are, because you know the United States does have a lot of weight to throw around in this area. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically. Things are worse even than what we had thought a few years ago, and um, we are not on a path to making them better. Yeah. Um, I want to bracket that by saying we actually can make it better, uh, but it does take a large amount of political will and regular people actually deciding to make it a change. You know. Yeah, I, I do want to return to that, uh, but but you brought up the uh, the some people in our government that might not uh, receive. Uh, a more strongly worded letter. Well, Donald Trump was asked about this report and he said, well, I'll have to take a look at it, see who drew it. There are some reports that are fabulous and some that aren't. What does your gut say? Do you think that it's likely that Donald Trump or our government in general will take seriously this conservative report? No, I mean, they're, they're not going to take action on it because they're so beholden to uh, Fossil fuel industry folks, uh, you know, and, and their wealthy donors who have a vested interest in seeing fossil fuel consumption continue as it has. Uh, and of course, the big lie here is that fossil fuels are heavily subsidized, so they already aren't uh, a really economically viable way uh, or environmentally friendly way of doing business. But uh, you know, Trump at all—that's uh, that's sort of their game plan. And even though they know. They know for sure that climate change is real. We've seen a few different examples of that, but they're not going to act on this. And as long as we have the Trump administration in power and the complicit Republicans in Congress calling the shots, like we yeah. we really have to lean on states and the private sector and local people to do the right thing. So one of the things that that's bothered me in. I guess the popular response to this information whenever it comes out about climate change is that many people seem to think that climate change is a thing that is one day going to happen. In 30 or 70 years, all of a sudden, it's gonna get really bad. When obviously it's a far more gradual thing. So based on what we see right now, if we don't drastically change our course, the course that we're on right now, in 10 or 50 or 100 years, what do you see happening? Well, you know, we've got some pretty scary um, eventualities that are coming down the turnpike at us. And one of those is if we hit that two degrees Celsius uh, of warming, which is about four degrees Fahrenheit, um, it doesn't sound like much because you could have a four degree temperature difference in your house and it wouldn't bother you. But you're also not uh, an organism that depends on a certain threshold uh, to live. Yeah. Uh, you're also, um, you know, basically our oceans, I think, are the most scary prospect uh, for what we're going to see. Because we're going to see sea level rise, even at two degrees, we're going to see several feet of sea level rise. Which, if you know that um, about 40% of the United States lives in a coastal county, uh, that's a kind of a big thing. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got the uh, the fact that our entire coral reefs all around the world will die off at two degrees Celsius. That is a mass extinction, and that just has to do with stuff in the ocean. I mean, there's so many more ramifications, and people don't understand that it's not. Climate change isn't one gigantic cliff. Um, this is something that's tricky when you're a geologist like I am. You have to explain to people that the Earth doesn't operate on our time scale. It's not like mm. Tuesday we're fine and Wednesday we're screwed. It's more like, okay, there's, it's a it's a, a collective uh, death by a thousand cuts kind of thing. Yeah. And we really need to start 
getting it into people's heads what it will look like. So we have to start bringing in the vision of like we did with say nuclear war to get people to realize, hey, maybe we need to regulate the amount of nukes we have. Um, we started to show apocalyptic scenes and um, we did have scenes from Hiroshima and Nagasaki to kind of to freak people out essentially. But I think that's what we haven't been doing effectively with climate is we yeah. haven't been showing people the reality in a way that they can understand. Well, hopefully at some point they'll start to understand the link between climate change and extreme weather events because that could be the sort of footage maybe that you're talking about. But I get criticized a lot for my environmental coverage being too negative, too pessimistic. So I wanna turn to more positive or productive steps. So you had been talking earlier about what needs to be done. So let's say hypothetically Donald Trump gets kicked out of office tomorrow. We somehow get President Bernie Sanders and he puts you in charge of the national and indeed international response to climate change. What would you do to put us on the course to avoid the worst of these effects? Well, obviously I would want to eliminate all the fossil fuel subsidies right now, all of them. Because you know what, if your industry can't make it and you're actually harming people, you don't need a little handout or a big handout. So that would be a big step nationwide. But then also, I would really want to take the approach that the United States government took when we tackled the Dust Bowl, which was a massive environmental issue that was partially you know, natural and partially human caused. Because the way that we dealt with the Dust Bowl was the government listened to scientists. I know it's a novel concept. And then they actually went into local communities and were worked with the populations to say, here's what we can do at the local level. So whether it's you know revamping how we do transportation, whether it's you know teaching kids in schools about having a meatless Monday or whatever to ease the burden on animal agriculture, whether it's tree planting programs, there's a lot we can do. Right now, the only message that seems to get through is recycling. But in reality, there's a lot of other choices we can make that are gonna have big impacts, even that are that are cheap for people because not everyone can afford to say go buy an electric car. Yeah, so really fast, we only have a little bit of time, but what leaps to your mind as a few things that viewers of this show can start to do to try to contribute? Well, like I just mentioned, um, you know, people people like to jump on me because I'm vegetarian. Uh, but I actually chose to be vegetarian for many different reasons, and I'm not saying everybody has to be vegetarian or vegan. But if you can just think a little bit more about what you're eating and how much of it, and uh, you know where it comes from, the burden that we put on our environment to produce food is actually going to be a big climate issue. We're going to see food scarcity um, become a bigger problem because of climate change. So if we can shift our habits now, say don't eat meat one or two days a week or cut back on the amount of meat or dairy that you consume. That's an easy one. Yeah. Also, there's, you know, you could you can line dry your clothes. I know it sounds kind of kind of hippie-ish, but it does actually save some electricity, save some energy. Insulate your house as well as you can if if you own your own home. Because that'll actually make things a little bit easier on our power grid. And of course, buy from companies that say they are supporting renewable and green and carbon neutral initiatives. Wow, okay, very helpful tips. Thank you so much and thank you for joining us on the show. Jess Phoenix, volcanologist, we appreciate you joining us and lending your expertise. Oh, thanks for having me, John, anytime. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.